Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Kickstarter. Kickstarter is in the... Not a very good place right now. Really? Is that what you're saying? I almost said something else. But not I a very good place. Okay. I don't want to say that in the first couple minutes of the video because they'll be like, we're going to demonetize you for swearing. They're not in a good place uh, right now. We talked about Kickstarter a couple weeks ago that they had a 35% drop in projects year mm -hmm. over year. They're, yeah, you can't blame that all on coronavirus. No, they're trying to blame on coronavirus. I'm like, look, we're talking six weeks into it. That did not account for your 35% drop. It's because people are fleeing the platform uh, for a variety of mostly reasons. Mostly gatekeeping. Mostly gatekeeping, I think, because Indiegogo is doing fine. Mm -hmm. They're doing just fine. So they said that they were probably going to have to lay people off. Well, it's much worse than we expected. They're talking that they might have to lay off almost half of their employees. That's a lot. That is catastrophic. Well, it's interesting because you said you thought this was going to happen. When they went yes. union, you said what they're going to do is they're going to let people off, get rid of them, and then restructure. Yep. And that's get exactly rid of the what they're doing. To get rid of the union uh, or something. And they've restructured before, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, this is coming from thegamer.com. Kickstarter to lay off almost half of its employees because there are less projects. There are less projects because people are not using Kickstarter because Kickstarter has decided that they want to gatekeep, and I'll talk a little bit about that after we talk about the numbers. Uh, crowdfunding company Kickstarter is due to lay off a large portion of its workforce in the wake of the pandemic. Wrong. It's not the pandemic. It's not the pandemic. It's Kickstarter's damaged goods. Uh, they're laying off almost half of their employees thanks to the reduction in fundraising projects. And it's not just been the last couple of months. It's been ongoing. Here we go again. The coronavirus is wrecked. Bullshit. This isn't the coronavirus. Bullshit. It's not the coronavirus. It's Kickstarter. The problem is you, Kickstarter. Explain that is the problem. Start, it's, explain, uh, uh, you know, drops, consistent drops, if it's just the coronavirus. Uh, yeah, well, people are continuing to support live projects on Kickstarter, according to David Gallagher. The COVID crisis has led to a 35% drop in live projects from a year ago. Mm -mm. No, it's been declining. If anything, you think there are more projects now, people are trying to find a way to get money because they don't have their jobs. Yep. So here, how did we how did we get to this point with Kickstarter? Kickstarters come under scrutiny. Now, I want to back the bus up here to a couple of years ago. People don't realize the Kickstarter current year is not the same Kickstarter that started like 10 plus years yes. ago. Uh, Kickstarter back then was just a way to raise money to do whatever the hell you wanted to do. Kickstarter current year, they restructured in 2015. Now they're a public benefit corporation. Yeah, so anything that came before 2015, you know, was under a completely different company that is no longer there. Technically, you were working with a different company, yes, before 2015. Now you're working with Kickstarter PBC, which explains why they changed their payment processor. They used to use Amazon, now they use Stripe. Uh, everything has changed, and the reason they did that is because they wanted to be a public benefit corporation. The whole purpose is they put themselves on the same level as like a museum mm -hmm. or, you know, some kind of like endowment for the arts the fartsy thing yeah. that's what it is but it also gives them the legal right to shoot down your project for any reason mm -hmm. and that's what kicked off the union they actually uh the kickstarter bosses did not want them to publish a comic or have a, a comic called always punch yahtzees right because it violated the rules and they shot down other projects that they felt violated rules even when they didn't right because people at kickstarter did not like the individuals mm -hmm. You know, even though it had nothing to do, and we saw this with Patreon too, it had nothing to do with the project itself. It was they did not like those individuals. Well, when the union went through, one of the things they were demanding, they were mostly demanding more creative control yes. than anything else. Yep. So they demand creative control and they can pick and choose who gets to be on the platform. Then suddenly they take a giant hit in how many projects are on the platform. Coincidence? I think not. So look at this. Just two months ago, this is a huge breakthrough for Kickstarter and tech companies. Uh, fast forward two months, uh, laying off 45%, 45% of its people. But yeah, it was gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is a big reason a lot of people, especially in comics, have gone to Indiegogo because they don't have to deal with the bullshit. A lot of uh, video games, they're using Steam and other platforms to preview games. They're not even using Kickstarter anymore. You know, it's it's just it's got a lot of baggage. And this was a uh, this whole union thing started because of a stupid comic book. It was always punch yep. Yahtzee's people working at Kickstarter thought it should be published. The bosses said, hell no, we're not going to publish this. And the employees basically won. Mm -hmm. They won and then they unionized. So Kickstarter did not kill the Internet star. The Internet star kicked Kickstarter's ass. 
Pretty much, okay. pretty much. Making sure I understand. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of talk in comic circles about them bringing in someone to basically vet their comic book projects. Now, I don't know who's going to get laid off. They don't seem to know who's going to get laid off. Um, but here we go. Okay. So this is coming from the union. The union, of course, they're disappointed because they just started the union a couple of months ago. <laughs> yeah, they thought it's coming. This, uh, this is like duh. Um, while we're dis disappointed with the layoffs announced by Kickstarter management, we're proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with our entire union family in this multifaceted fight for our family's future and thankful for Kickstarter management's willingness to negotiate a fair deal for their employees. We will also continue to hold the company to their agreement uh, to recall these employees if there are any hirings in the coming year. I don't think they're going to be. No, but they basically everything they're using. It's like, you know, that force majeure. They're using this COVID thing to, to like, up. Oh, kick their union employees to the curb. Yep. Uh, so what they're doing is that apparently they get four months of severance pay, uh, six months of continued health insurance coverage and recall rights should the position, uh, should they ever recover the company enough to be able to hire people back. However, um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think either Kickstarter is going to restructure itself again or they're just going to try to run it with a leaner staff because they don't want the headaches that come with the union. Mm -hmm. And they're using that because they folded awfully quick. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, like two months after we unionize. Yeah. Hey, oh, <laughs> it's COVID. Let's get rid of these yeah. people. Uh, let's get Even rid though of the numbers people. have been dwindling for a long time. Yeah. They won't release the data on which categories have been affected. But I, I read in another article last week that they're only making like a million dollars profit at Kickstarter with all these projects. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's terrible. That's it can't be that low. I mean, it, I don't say you say in business that. Well, low. I think that's after, after employees, after payments after employees. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. So this is gonna happen. We're seeing the same thing happen with uh, Gizmodo at Gawker Media, all of whatever's left of Gawker, where they unionize and they're making a big deal about, like, yeah, we're all union now, and then they're getting fired. Well, here's the thing that gets me: if they're running out of money, they have to lay off forty five percent of their staff. But they're giving people four months of severance pay, continued health coverage, and telling they're coming back. How are they going to pay for that? Because that's basically as if you're running four more months uh, at, at, at full price. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, you know, um, <laughs> this makes no sense to me. I think they're they're cutting them loose this early because they know long term this is not sustainable, and they're probably internally looking at this like it's better to cut them loose now than have to pay these people for another year. Another I'm just two saying, years. It, yeah. you know, if we don't have the money, how does giving them four months of severance, uh, you know, fig factor in? Um, I don't know. Maybe they have an out. Maybe they they're able to be like, we don't have it. I don't know. I mean, they're I hemorrhaging just, money. How, how are they uh, my argument is, I guess what I'm saying is, if, if they have, they're so they're hemorrhaging money so bad they have to cut almost half their staff, but they're still paying them for four months. Yeah. You know what I mean? They can be, and, and by four months they might be back in, you know, up and running more. So it doesn't, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't add up is what I'm saying. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, so they put it on a good face. They're like, oh, you know, everybody's so brilliant and everybody's so wonderful. Uh, the one thing that concerned me though, is they said that they were actually looking, they're looking at voluntary buyouts. So I think they're trying to get rid of people sooner. So they don't have to call them back. Yeah. When we know which employees are interested in leaving voluntarily, we'll be able to look at those roles that the company's strategic needs and better understand the scale of any layoffs that may be required. Uh, they're going to use the opportunity to get rid of people that uh, maybe cost the company money. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Just putting that out there. Uh, they also said that they're going to... Uh, you know, I guess release people from their non-competes, which concerns me. If I were Indiegogo, if I were the boss of Indiegogo, I would be hesitant to hire somebody from Kickstarter, given the history, and we saw how things went down over there, that they basically, the employees want to be in a position to tell the bosses how to run their company. Uh, I would be hesitant to hire yeah, somebody from, from Kickstarter. I can't tell you what to do with your business, but uh, Indiegogo, as you are, you're the ascension of, of Indiegogo is directly related to the decline of Kickstarter. And if you want that to continue, I would suggest uh, not, not. Being careful how you move forward. Being careful how, yes, don't gatekeep. Don't gatekeep because it's not going to make you money. Mm -mm. Um, and uh, don't reorganize as a public benefits corporation and have some highfalutin notion of what your role in the world actually is. Because uh, people don't give a shit at this point. They're, they're looking for toilet want, paper. Well, that I'm saying people just want a, a facilitator. A, you know, they don't want a gatekeeper. Right. Somebody said they should set up a GoFundMe to bail out yeah, Kickstarter. 
Uh, here, oh yeah, here. yeah. See, yeah, there yeah. you go. If they get four to pay out four months and then get rehired in six, I'm I'm not hearing the or I'm not hearing the alarm bells. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, this is gonna this is definitely gonna change things. And this is again only you know two months into the the uh, coronavirus crisis. How many other companies are gonna? Yeah, I know. Take this opportunity to get rid of potentially problematic employees. I agree. I'm just saying. Nope, under the under the guise of oh it's coronavirus. Yeah. Oh, it's all coronavirus. Yep, that's why we're getting rid of you. Okay, so we gotta wrap it up. Yep. Okay, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.